one state question gets an explanation. We are joined by a special guest to break down the race for governor and a polio like illness is confirmed in Oklahoma. This is OU Nightly. Hello, thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Shereen Hashem. And I'm Kyle Payne. We begin tonight with a health alert spreading across, across the country and now hitting Oklahoma. The Centers for Disease Control has informed the Oklahoma State Health Department about a pediatric patient with a rare paralyzing illness that is similar to polio. The disease is called acute flaccid myelitis and has impacted at least 63 patients across the United States, with doctors investigating dozens of other cases that are yet to be confirmed. Early symptoms mirror those of a common cold, including cough, congestion, and fever. But then all of a sudden, it changes into something far more concerning that doctors are baffled as to why. There's no specific treatment for this, but with rehab, a lot of times they recover uh, a lot of the muscle strength. The scariest cases are, are when the muscle, the diaphragm muscle, which controls your breathing, also becomes paralyzed. The Oklahoma Health Department knows there is at least one child under 18 in the state with the illness. Doctors say there is no vaccine or prevention plan other than standard practices like washing hands frequently or using hand sanitizer. Now the past two days in Norman have been unseasonably cold. But today the weather is final, has finally turned around. Marissa Nuzo joins us with more on the temperature increase. Yeah, today was a lot warmer than what we've seen the past couple of days. In fact, it is 13 degrees warmer here in Norman than it was about 24 hours ago. And that trend is pretty much throughout most of the body of the state. A little bit warmer in Muskogee and Tulsa. And those current temperatures outside right now, 67 here in Norman, hitting 70 out in Tulsa, which is a lot warmer and a lot more comfortable than that 50 degrees that we've had the past couple of days. So this fall temperature trend in the upper 60s is going to continue. We do have some Friday rain chances and I have your special National Weather Festival forecast coming up. The death toll from Hurricane Michael stands at 32 people as of today and the powerful winds flatten cities and much of the Florida panhandle. OU Nightly Storm Jones is in Panama City, Florida, where Oklahomans are helping with recovery efforts. About 20 employees with the Public Service Company of Oklahoma are working to restore power here to this neighborhood, doing everything from replacing snapped lines to broken poles and blown transformers. We are totally blessed, even though we've got major damage. We totally blessed and we are alive. So, you know, what more can you ask for? Destruction across the Florida Panhandle, Oklahomans working to help piece it all back together. We don't know how to say thank you enough. We really don't. PSO comes and does this to help out other utilities. We, we like to say that uh, we have a little acronym in the office saying that PSO stands for people serving others. More than 120 PSO workers are part of the more than 200 people from Oklahoma Electric Companies working in Florida. Sleeping in massive camps, nearly 40 people to each converted semi-trailer, many expecting to be away from their families till the end of the month. We are so blessed to have them. We're so blessed. Never, ever forget them. Never, ever forget them. And while the power has been restored for this block, there is still plenty of work to do across the Florida Panhandle. Storm Jones, OU Nightly, Panama City, Florida. Authorities say they expect the death toll to rise as waters recede and more people missing are located. And Ashley Eddy joins us now in the News Center with new evidence on the Saudi journalist who went missing two weeks ago. Ashley? The United States has asked Turkey for a recording that could reveal details of what happened to Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. President Donald Trump is asking for the recording if it exists, but says he is not sure if it does. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo went to Turkey and will be back late tonight or early tomorrow. An important ally, but I want to find out what happened, where is the fault, and we will probably know that by the end of the week. But Mike Pompeo is coming back. We're going to have a long talk. Texas high school students now aren't just required to take classes in English, math, and science. They now must take a class on how to deal with law enforcement during a traffic stop. In order to graduate, students in grades 9 through 12, 12 must take a class and watch a 16-minute video. Senate Bill 30, known as the Community Safety Education Act, was signed to help ease tensions between police and students. 
and Canada is now the world's largest legal marijuana marketplace. Sales at the country's first marijuana dispensary began today. Adults of at least 18 years old will be allowed to carry and share up to 30 grams of legal marijuana in public. They will also be allowed to cultivate up to four plants in their house and make products such as edibles. And Shireen, this is the first change for Canada in 17 years as medicinal marijuana has been legal in the country since 2001. Thanks, Ashley. Some students on the Norman campus might have been a little alarmed this morning walking past a giant crane outside Gaylord Hall. OU Knightley's Sam Brown has more on what this special surprise was. The University of Oklahoma is adding a new sculpture outside Gaylord Memorial Stadium, but it's not Heisman Park that's getting a new addition. No, the school had something else in mind. Introducing the Covered Wagon, the newest addition to OU's public sculpture collection. Well, this piece was given to us by a donor, Will Obering. Uh, many will be familiar with his previous donation, which is the sculpture Love by Robert Indiana, which sits out in front of the visitor center on the North Oval. The sculpture was designed by Tom Otterness, an artist from Kansas who has made his living in New York. Almost all the sculpture starts with a drawing first and then go to a small scale model, which in this case was about three feet long. And then from the small scale, we enlarge up to this large scale. When making the covered wagon, Otterness wanted to add a retro side to it while implementing his style. My idea with it was it was kind of like the old 50s vacation in the, in the station wagon with the kids fighting in the back and, and dad is the bull and mom's driving. The sculpture's location outside the stadium will also expose it to thousands of Sooner fans on game days, and Otterness doesn't mind it getting a little dirty. It's a, it's a very climbable sculpture, and that's it's what it's good for. Uh, so I can imagine, like, everybody hanging out, you know, maybe popping a few up there. <laughs> With the school's outdoor collection seemingly expanding every year, students may get another surprise on their campus soon. Sam Brown, OU Knightley. There are no current plans to add to the school's outdoor collection, but White said with so many potential donors, there's always a chance a new piece will be added. And the state question that's catching everyone's eye has people debating where they'll be getting eye care. We dive into state question 793 next. Plus, it's flu season in Oklahoma, and we have more on how easy it is to get a vaccination. Stay with us. When Oklahomans hit the polls in a few weeks, they will have a lot of decisions to make. One of those questions, state, state question 793, looks at how Oklahomans have the opportunity to vote for affordable eye care and more accessible places. 47 other states in the U.S. have the opportunity to get affordable eye care in stores such as Target and Walmart. State question 793, supporters say expanding the consumer choice for vision care is a good thing for the state. Those against 793 are worried that the question passing will dramatically change the profession by allowing the corporations who run the stores to dictate the type of eye care that a patient receives. I like coming to the eye doctor and having the personal attention that I get from my doctor here, and I feel like my doctor's clinic is regulated. The midterm elections where you can vote on state question 793 is November 6th. We're just under three weeks away from the 2018 election. Tatum Wilson joins us now with an OU political science professor to discuss the most important race in the state. Shereen and Kyle, we're talking today about the race for governor of Oklahoma. The latest Sooner poll shows Democratic candidate Drew Edmondson is just about two points behind Republican candidate Kevin Stitt. Joining me now is OU political science professor, Dr. Keith Gaddy. First, thank you for joining us today. Um, so moving forward, the race for Oklahoma governor is sitting pretty close right now. What do you think we can expect from Drew Edmondson's campaign? Well, Edmondson's campaign really needs to focus on voter mobilization and on trying to dissuade Stitt voters from turning out. No open seat Democrat has ever polled over 44% of the vote since 1990. And for Edmondson to win, he's not going to break a majority, but he's got to keep his vote as high as possible while trying to keep Stitt's vote home. So talking about Kevin Stitt's campaign moving forward, we know Mike Pence is planning to come to Tulsa tomorrow to campaign for him. What do you think this is going to do for the 
uh, for his campaign going forward. You know, it's interesting seeing Mike Pence come in. Mike Pence is very popular with the evangelical conservatives, and Tulsa is a big evangelical center inside the state of Oklahoma. Deploying Pence this late in the campaign indicates that it's a close campaign, and part of the goal here is to mobilize evangelical Christian voters and core Republicans to turn out. Deploying a high profile, and in Republican circles, relatively popular vice president in this manner is an indication of how close that race is. What do you think Drew Edmondson can do to rival such a prominent Republican member campaigning for Stitt? Well, you know, it's funny because there's no national Democrat you can bring in who can do for Edmondson what Pence might do for Stitt. Uh, you know, national Democrats just aren't popular here. And so what Edmondson has to do is really work from the grassroots up. It's about turning out older traditional Democrats who might not have voted for the previous two Democratic nominees, but might turn out for Edmondson because of his family's long ties in the state. It may be pe turning out people who are younger new Democrats who are in the urban centers. That's really the future of the Democratic Party is Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Norman, places like that and the suburbs that surround them. What do you think has been especially unique about this race for governor compared to years past? You know, both candidates are able to run against the incumbent governor. I mean, Mary Fallon has about a 14% approval rating right now, which is a historic low for the state of Oklahoma. And having an unpopular governor and an unpopular state government means that Edmondson as a Democrat can run against this unified Republican government saying, see, I told you so, try us out. Kevin Stick can run against all the politicians who have been in there saying, you need an outsider, I'm a businessman, I'm not this governor, I'm not that part of the Republican Party, I'm from the outsider branch of the party, let me get in there and straighten this place out. So it really is kind of unique that everybody gets to run against the incumbent. Well, we'll be hearing more from you as we move forward in our election coverage, but thank you for joining us today. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Tatum. Marissa Nuzzo has more on this weekend's rain chances. That's right, guys. We do have some rain coming our way for Friday. I have all the details right after this. Welcome back to OU Nightly. We are taking a look at this radar loop. There is still a lot of rain in Texas, but back here at home, it is a beautiful day. A few clouds in the sky, but no rain and temperatures almost reaching the 70s. But tonight we are going to see lows in the 50s, 51 here in Norman, our typical fall low. And it's going to be even chillier walking out the door tomorrow at 43 degrees. And those clouds are going to come in throughout the day. And that's because we are going to have some scattered showers move through our area throughout the day and then more rain chances as the day goes on for Thursday. But our highs tomorrow across the state, 60 here in Norman, a little bit warmer out to the east and cooler off to the west where there will be predominantly more rain. So now let's take a look at where and when we are going to see rain. So throughout the day Thursday, lots of scattered showers and then Thursday night it will move in and Friday morning do expect to see some rain when you are walking out the door. And then that rain is going to persist throughout the day on Friday and it's going to clear out just in time for National Weather Festival here in Norman on Saturday. So if you are planning to head out to the National Weather Festival, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day, reaching up to 66 by 2 p.m. with sunny skies, a perfect day for launching weather balloons and hanging out with the weather friends. So again, for tomorrow, cool winds and then those scattered showers, and that's going to pick up and go into Thursday night, and those scattered showers are going to continue into Friday. But this weekend looks beautiful. Temperatures are in the mid upper 60s, 66 on Saturday, sunny, no rain chances for the weekend. So, you know, it's finally going to be a nice weekend with no rain. I'm just glad to see that fall didn't completely skip over. I was worried that we were just going straight to winter. Yeah, no, we have a little bit, a few more weeks of fall. No, I'm excited for the game. Now I don't have to worry about rain and it's going to be beautiful weather. Yes, it's going to be beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. The flu season is quickly approaching and the Center for Disease Control is predicting this year's virus severity to be high. Goddard Health Center is offering free vaccines tomorrow to students and faculty with an OUID from 8 to 430. Medical professionals encourage everyone to get the flu vaccine, not just for yourself, but to keep others healthy as well. The flu vaccine has never been 100 percent. It's, you know, it does vary every year. It's overwhelmingly clear from the data that I read that there's minimal risk with the flu shot and the, just the, the chance of uh, contracting it. It is not always effective. That is true, uh, but just statistically, it, it does keep people out of the hospital a lot more when people use it. Flu shots at Sooner Pharmacy are $25 or maybe free with your insurance. 
And William Sule joins us with a breakdown of the OU Texas locker room drama. Sports is next. When the Sooners take on the TCU Horned Frogs this weekend in Fort Worth, it'll be the first time that the defense will take the field since the firing of Mike Stoops. Meredith Mulkey joins us to give the latest on some recent sur reports surrounding linebacker Curtis Bolton. Meredith? Yeah, William, there have been some reports that at the halftime of the Texas game, Bolton and Stoops got into a physical altercation in the locker room and that Bolton threatened to quit the team. Yesterday, he finally spoke to the media about the situation and clearly denied those rumors. I could care less if people think I fought my coach. Um, you know, my, 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 my coach and staff knows what happened. My teammates know what happened. Um, at the end of the day, there was no huge argument. There was no huge fist fight. Um, I was a little frustrated with how we were playing. I was a little frustrated uh, I didn't play in the second quarter. Um, we got in the locker room, and, and I got my checks through my coaches, and uh, uh, things got heated in there, just how they always do. Um, that's how it goes. And um, a guy like me, sometimes I just need to, I just need my space. And, uh, you know, I was getting a little too riled up in there. Um, the crazy thing about it is me and, me and Coach Stoops didn't personally exchange a word in the locker room, which is so, so it's crazy to me that someone would drop that. We'll see how Bolton and the rest of the Sooner defense performs this weekend with all the rumors finally behind them. Thanks, Meredith. The Oklahoma City Thunder opened their season last night against their hated rivals, the Golden State Warriors, as they received their championship rings before the game. Russell Westbrook sat out as he continues to recover from off-season knee surgery, but the team fought hard in his absence. Dennis Schroeder got the start and played well, scoring 21 points, while Paul George added 27 of his own with four steals. However, 32 points from Steph Curry would see the Warriors get the 108-100 to win. The Dodgers and the Brewers needed extras to decide game four as, OK, as former OKC Dodger Cody Bellinger had a huge night for LA. A Superman grab in the top of the 10th to keep the game tied was followed by a single to right in the bottom of the 13th that scored Manny Machado all the way from second to give the Dodgers the 2-1 win, evening the series at two games apiece. Game five is underway right now from LA and right now they sit scoreless in the third inning. And this week, the winner of the week, we made history because for the first time ever, we have co-champions. After their 30-14 victory over number six, West Virginia, the Iowa State Cyclone faithful stormed the field to celebrate. West Virginia head coach and sore loser Dana Holgerson called the move unprofessional and voiced concerns over the safety of his players. The Big 12 then took a page out of Goodell's No Fun League playbook and publicly reprimanded the Cyclones, in addition to having them add a $25,000 fine. Guys, we might need a bigger wine bottle because they're doing a whole lot of whining between our two co-champions. <laughs> if your team loses that bad, storm the field. I wish we got to do it at OU. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Top-tier programs are never going to be able to do that. For, but for someone like Iowa State, it should be allowed. Yeah. Thanks, Wayne. Up next, Charlie Brown, eat your heart out. We have some more on some seriously large pumpkins. I'm Talon Forbes at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Hillary Clinton seems to be unarmed after her Secret Service vehicle crashed. Tuesday night, Clinton was headed to a fundraiser for U.S. Senator Bob Menendez, a New Jersey uh, senator, when her vehicle pulled into a parking garage and hit a concrete crossbeam. Clinton emerged from the van and walked to the fundraiser where she was the featured guest. The Secret Service says no injuries were reported and the Jersey City Police Department is investigating. Follow OU Nightly on social media for updates. Back to you. Thanks, Talon. Some pumpkins are used for jack-o'-lanterns and some are used for decoration. But for some farmers in Minnesota, pumpkins are all about the size. The largest pumpkin contest took place and the winners presented their pumpkin or their prize pumpkin weighing a whopping 2,100 pounds, a new state record. Minnesota wasn't the only state involved. The Illinois winner proudly showed off their 1,500 pounder. These pumpkins would put Charlie Brown's great pumpkin to shame. And thanks for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylord College at the University of Oklahoma. 
We'll see you back here tomorrow live at 4.30. Have a great evening. Good night.